everyone Well, okay, we just got a couple of more minutes. <clears throat> Let me see, about three, I think it is. Yep, about three. We're working with the um, Build the Block Plus dies, set of dies. That's the add on to the Build the Block set. So if you have those, get them out. And if you don't, now you'll find out whether you like them or not. I got my little... Well, I didn't, I didn't give you much difference in color there, did I? That was kind of mean of me. I think I'm going to switch over. Because then I can hold it. I can hold it up better with this one. Let's see. While we're waiting. Let's see if everybody fits on there all right. Yeah, and I can hold it up. See if we come in a little closer. Yeah, how's that? So I cut all of these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here I go with my throat again. From a charm pack, which is a five inch squares so if you got a charm pack hanging around you don't know what to do with it yes I'm, I'll move this a second because here's one I did with colors So now you can really you can really see the difference there. Oh hi Lynn, how you doing? 
those things over in your neck of the woods? Does anybody say that, neck of the woods? So look, I can, I can work with these, and I can sneak and work with those. Let's see. Let's switch these up, shall we? We'll pretend that one is sewn together. I know, I got to get it all neat. There, he's hanging off a little ways, but there we go. Oh, don't want you looking over there, having your eye distracted. Okay, let's see. Oh, hi, Rhonda. Oh, yeah, it is a little, it's 21 degrees here. But it's warm inside, that's all I can say. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started. Oh, hi everyone. We're working from the Build the Block Plus um, box set of dies that works with the original Build the Block that we've been working out of. And I was looking in the book, and I came to, where was it? Is it right at the beginning? Did I pass it already? Oh, it is, the very beginning. So I was looking at this. Whoop, give me a second to get the glare away. I was looking at this one, and I noticed that if you can see, see there's a line right down there? And I was thinking, well, we've got a triangle. If we want to look like that, <clears throat> why not use the triangle? So we're going to um, talk about how this one works and how that one's going to work. So I got out my, out of the, half rectangle triangle, I took out the two and a half by four and a half, okay? And then out of the isosceles triangle, I took out the four and a half, which is the next to the biggest one, because we have staying in that resource books ha has everything that works on, uh, you know, two, four, eight, no six. So those are the two, those are the two dies I'm going to use. We don't need our book. So we're going to chat about it for a minute. Let me do this so that you can, do I have another one? Yeah, now you can see the now you can see the difference. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about this type first, where we're using the die that's the triangle, and we're using the, um, what, what did they call it? Half? Oh, hold on. Half, I was going to say half square. Half rectangle, half rectangle triangle. Okay, half rectangle triangle. So if you set this, the dies beside each other and I've got the cutting side facing down, you see how it works on this side, but it doesn't work on this side. And if you turn it around, it doesn't work on that side. So you're thinking, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? When you cut the sides for this, 
you have to have your fabric right sides together. So, if you're working with, and let me just move this over for a second. So if you're working with a um, charm pack five inch square, when you fold it in half, it doesn't really work. Um, so you need to lay two down to the same. And a lot of times in your, so I have two of the same. I'm going to lay them right sides together. Okay. And then I can put my half rectangle triangle down and they're right sides together. So I'm going to have two opposing ones, but I can still turn this around on this side and get two more out because they're still opposite each other. So when I get ready to do this, I'll go ahead and cut mine while you watch, just to make sure that that really works. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we understand on this one that the two sides have to be right sides together because these are opposite. So it isn't opposite as in turning this, this doesn't make it opposite because if you look here, and you can, I've lost the triangle already. Oh, so if we put our triangle down, <clears throat> excuse me. If we put our triangle down and match this up, that works fine. But if we turn this, that doesn't help us any. The only way we can do it is, this, is that now the cutting side is up. So that means you've got a, you've got, that will tell you that you need one fabric right side up and one fabric right side down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you forget, I just, you know, try that. So if I have to flip this over, my cutting uh, part of my die is facing down. If I flip this over to fit, my cutting die is facing up. I don't know if that will help you, if that helps or makes it worse. You just know that these have to be right sides together. Okay, so let me just get these out of the way. Now, this one is just using this die. So one is going this way, and one is going the opposite way. I didn't have to flip it over. So that means I need all my fabrics right side up or all of them right side down, whichever way you want to do it, but they all have to be facing in the right, right direction. So if I have a fabric, I can cut one group this way. I can turn it around and cut the other group this way. I didn't flip it over. I just turned it around, which means the, the, the same as, um, See, if I take this one and I turn it around, it's the same shape. Now, you notice I did some of each, that this line is going in this direction, and this one, the seam, is going in the opposite direction. So this won't fit on this one. So if I put... If I took two fabrics and I put them right sides together and I put, I cut once this way and once this way, then you would have one with the angle going in one direction and the other with the angle going in the other opposite direction. The two I sewed together here, they're angled both in the same direction. And I wanted that because I really didn't want it to look like this. I mean, you could, but to me, I, I can do, I can get that this way. 
unless you want it to be look like this, but two different fabrics. But if you want those fabrics to be the same, you're better off using the triangle with the two half rectangle triangles. Whew, that was a lot, wasn't it? So does that make sense? If you're using the half rectangle triangle to make a whole rectangle, your pieces have to all be cut either all right side up or all right side down. When you want to do the isosceles triangle with the um, um, fabrics on each side, these have to, you have to cut a pair Every pair has to be right side together, okay? If I was just cutting triangles of different colors, I can just keep turning them and putting them together. I don't have a, oh, wait a minute. What did I do with the one I just, here it is. So I, oh. So it would look like that. I mean, that would be ugly colors, but you see? So then I would, but I would have to make the row. Now, if I got to the end of my row, I could have one of these on each end. And that's just the pair. One on the left and one on the right of however long your row is. So you have lots of options here. I know sometimes it's just too many, too many options. So if you would like to do your row, because this would have to be done by the row. And the next row would be opposite of this. The same as when we did the hexagon. So the next row, you might want to do like that. So you get these big, long um, diamonds. That's kind of cool. And again, you could fill in your edges like that. So then, so the same with we did the hexagon. This would be the full diamond. The next one would be a half diamond because it would be opposite. See, this one would have the rest of its diamond up here, or it would continue down. I didn't. I didn't cut quite enough pieces for that. Let's let's. Uh, so this one would be up like up here, or it would start the sequence uh, here, and then this this dark one would have its partner, its mate would be down here. So you would have um, alternating diamonds. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut first for this one. So let me, let me move this up here. Let me just take it right out of the way. How about that? And I'll show you on the plate. How I'm cutting. Let's see, who do we have this way? I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little crunchy again. I have the I have the um, big the big Gemini out today so I could have a little more uh, room. Okay. And I'm just gonna take from this. So the first thing the first one we're gonna do is this one. Okay, so, and I'll cut two, so let's take, well, we'll, we'll cut one and then, I'll, I'll cut one and then show you how to get two out of the, um, the charm pack. So I'm going to lay, 
uh, I have to have opposite. So right sides together. I'm going to lay that down. So I put my triangle on. And that pretty well takes up the whole um, the whole five inch square. And then I'm just going to put the this half, what is it, half rectangle triangle on one side. And I'll turn this so it faces you in one second here. Okay, so I just have one fabric here. I have two fabrics here, right sides together. And I've laid the um, half rectangle triangle, i got to give it a shorter name, to one side because I can come in and, and use this other side. Okay, so I'm on the metal. And I've got the plastic and then the clear plate. This one takes a little longer because it's a longer plate. Okay. So remember, I'm going to take this and turn these over and get them ready for next time. Running out of, running out of places to put things. Okay, so this one is all cut. Got a thread hanging on there. So that one's cut. But I want to cut another one. Yeah, I could I could have done them both at the same time, but I didn't want this one to be lonely. So let's do it with um I don't know. Let's see what else have I got here. Can't remember what this one looked like. Oh, it's darker. Okay. Well, I think this is the same color we just did because I seem to have a I seem to have a bunch of them. But this time I'll put it so this one I have the lines going this way. This time I'll have I have them vertical. This time I'll do them horizontal. Trying to get out of the habit of saying this way and that way. Okay, now here, these are cut, so I'm going to take this tape off. So I can take these out, and I should have, can you see there? One in each direction. Let me move that down. Oh, you know what? I zoomed in. Let me zoom back out. Oh, sorry. Wrong way. There we go. So I, oh, I have one of, in each direction, so that worked. Now I'm going to take my die, and I'm going to still cutting side down, and I'm just going to put it on the other side. I can squeeze closer, so if I had a strip of fabric, I could lay it this way. Um, but I don't have to. I can. So I'll go a little closer, and I'll just put a little tape on that. And I do have to at least flip this guy over. I can never remember, does it, which, which way does it make it bend? See, I do this every week, don't I? Does it bend this way or does it bend this way? I think it bends that way. Let's try that. So I'm doing the, the curve, um, what is that? Concave instead of convex. Isn't that funny? I know convex better than concave. I don't know why. Okay, so putting the sandwich together.
I got some <laughs> serious curves going on. Okay. So now when I take these off, So I'm done. I'm done with this die. I'm just gonna set it there. You know, I'm gonna forget that that's there. And I'll tell you that one little thread that likes to stay is a strong little fella. Okay, so here's my next one, and then here's my two pieces, and they should work fine. So one goes here. One goes on the left, one goes on the right. So, let me... Okay, so even though I turned my die, first it was this way, then it was this. I didn't flip it, I just turned it. I still, because I've got my right sides together... I still got a pair. Now you'd have to be a little careful if you had um, if you had a directional fabric. You'd have to be a little careful of that. Okay, so do we get that one okay? All right, let's um, let's go ahead and stitch. No, you know what? Let's stay in the same train of thought. I was gonna say let's go ahead and stitch that together. And if you wanted to save these one-inch strips. You can put a whole bunch of those together. And after you have um, 20,000 of them, you'll have a quilt. All right. So I am going to quickly run my, run my plates with just my plastic through see if I can flatten them out a little bit. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Okay, so I got my my just flatten my uh, plastic out a little a little better. Okay, so now for this one, where we're gonna, so we've made the triangle with the sides. And let me just at least put one pair of those up there. Okay, so that's that one. Now we're gonna be just using this. And I must have been using this pack for something else because it's running a little thin. Okay, so I want to put two colors together like, lost my, lost my sample. I got my, I got my triangle samples. Why for crying out? Oh, they're still on the mat. So now we're going to do this uh, unit, which is just two of the half rectangle triangle dies. And these are going to have to go in the same direction. So I'm going to put this uh, fabric down. And so it's, it's pairing they're both going to be right side up, okay? And I'll cut this way with the angle here, but when I turn it and cut it, that's going to give me the, I believe that's going to give me the other angle. So let's try it and find out. I stuck my tape somewhere now, that tape I had, and I don't, ah, let's get a new piece of tape, shall we? And let's... I don't I don't have a lot of wiggle room here. And if you look in the front of your book, 
Let me get that for a second. Remember in the very front of our book is, is showing you about the grain line. Okay. Okay, so, oh, so I threw the book on top of the place. Okay, so I have my two fabrics, both right side up. Okay, machine liked it better after I did the um, the plastic with the two um, clear plates. Okay, so oh. so there's my pair. Okay. Now I believe if I turn this, no, I think they're gonna be the same. I think they'll be fine. So now I've gone to the other side and let's see where, how, our, how our angle cut is. I think it's gonna be the same. And of course, now that I said that, you know it's gonna be opposite, right? It sounded like a lot of racket, didn't it? Oh, I just lost the plate. Okay, so let me take these out. Okay, I'm going to put my dies right there. You know, I like to put them away, but I'm in the effort of being... Well, now I've made a big... And now I've made a big mess. Okay, hold on. Let's get the plates out of the way. We don't need to. Oh, gee, sorry. That must have hurt. Okay, so we're we're still going in the same direction, right? Okay, so even though we turned the die, the angle's still going in the same direction. We had the fabric face up. So if we put the fabrics both face down, then you would get your angle going in the opposite direction. So have you got all that? Okay, so now we want to sew them together. This one is fairly easy. And let me, I didn't hook up the other camera, so let me just... I figured you've seen me sew enough times. Get some stuff out of the way here. Okay, so when we sew these together, we're going to, I always put them together like that, make sure they're right, and then I'm going to flip it over. So if it's facing me, which yours would be facing you. Oh, I found my tape stuck to the side of my machine. That's not good. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to have it facing me, 
And I always think of this as I'm going to be turning the page of the book. So this really is column one, and this would be column two. Your rows go horizontal, your columns go vertical. So I want to set it down so I know it's right, and I'm just going to flip it over like I'm turning the page of the book. And I'm going to make sure, and I'll get it up a little closer here. I want to make sure that my edges meet. See? Oh, I need a flatter hand. See how the dog ears cut off there? And it's the same on that one. So they should meet. Now you will have... Just a tad. You see it right there? Little guy peeking out. And that's okay. Okay, we're going to have our regular um, quarter inch seam. I would do, in this case, I would do a slight quarter inch, which means a little narrower than a quarter inch. Just a little bit. And I'm lining up with my uh, quarter-inch marking that's right on the, my bobbin case. And I think I showed you that all close up in last week's uh, video. So if you want to refresh, you can go back when we made the hexagon. Okay, now... This might happen to you. I forgot just before I I um I was I was working the seam allowance uh, with my needle center center position, and then I forgot I changed it to my usual piecing stitch. Q Q Q O two. So mine, I have a, I have, I have a really a much narrower seam, but that's okay because you can always um, trim it up. So that's how that one goes together. So see how the the top really becomes one. Let me see if I, I'll go in a little. I'll, I'll make the seam just a tad deeper. That's what happens when you're sewing with your needle in one position for a while and you change it and you forget. There we go. Right, let me, I want to clip these threads so you can see. So both fabrics are lined up across. Can you see that? They're even across. Okay, so that's all you do to sew those, that one together. All right, we good on that? I got an extra one in case you need a second down. Now for this one's a little different. I don't have my... Uh, I feel funny not having something down here. But I'm throwing my scissors and things around. So let me face this towards you. We don't need all that distraction. So, and this is how it would be towards you. And we're going to put the right side on and the left side on. Okay, I just want to check and see if anybody has any questions on the last part. Which really means I need a drink of water. Okay, so on this one, whether you sew the left side first or the right side first, do it the same on all of your blocks. So 
So I'm going to do I'm going to do the right side first. So again, I would have this facing towards me so that I know I'm going to just flip like I'm turning the page. I'm going to flip this over. And in in um in this case, hope I ever take the word this out of the lang English language. My end, they are, they are perfectly the, the exact same shape. And on the bottom, that little part is going to hang over. Let's see if you can see it. See it from that side? See it peeking through? But you, they should be lined up across the top and the bottom, okay? Oops, that down almost missed my chair. And I want to press so that the seam allowance is going to go out to the outside edges, to the right and to the left. So I want to have my smaller fabric on top and press out. And remember, we really don't want to use an iron at this point. Okay? Oops. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this one over. I don't want to flip this way. That's too much fabric. I'm going to flip it this way. Because I would rather have my little fabric on top so I can keep an eye on him. But I'm going to check again and make sure those two edges line up on both ends. And pay extra attention to this top one because I find for myself I sometimes have it scooted down oh geez maybe just like a thread or two down I really want to be aware that I want this even with this top because that's what's going to give me that quarter of an inch above that point so when I stitch across here I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, cut my point off well you're not cutting it off you stitching all over it, but you know what I mean. I didn't want you to get literal on me there. So again, I'm having my smaller fabric on top so I can press that seam away from the center. So when I do that, you see how nice and flat that is? There's no bunch up here. Oh, hold on. My, my, um. Uh, My, my machine. All right. My machine's power cord came out. Holy moly. There we go. Phew. That was a close one. I, I don't ever usually have that unplugged. I'm not quite sure. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, we good? Okay, so there it is nice and flat. If I had pressed this one in and then this one, they would have been there there isn't even enough room for them to be over each other. Can you see it? Oh, wait a minute. This this part's make this guy's making a shadow. 
There we go. And let's see if you can, let me trim off the threads here. Let me see if this other one show, this one might show a little better. I'm just trim. I wouldn't normally trim the threads off, but I'm trimming them just so they're out of the way. So if you can see, do you see where the threads cross one another? Like, you know, like that. That's where you'll be sewing across and it'll be just above the little point. So if you're sewing across, you're going to keep your eye on. There we go. Where those two threads, those two seams cross each other, you just want to be like, you, you could be right on it. I go kind of like one thread above it. Okay? So if we sewed these together, let me see, do I have that? If we sewed these together, that's kind of cool. So see how we get the diamond? It's just I happen to have that they're almost like opposites of each other. That's kind of cool. And if they were the same, it would it would look like it would look like that. Let's see if I got a light the lighter one. Even though I went in the opposite direction. Then it would look oh, see now I can't see the difference between the two. That wasn't helpful at all. Here we go. We'll use this one. But see how you would have that diamond in the next row. I kind of like that. Oh. The next one over would be opposite. So it would be this way. So it would give you each row, each row would look like alternating diamonds. But that was kind of like a happy accident right there. Okay. So does anybody have any, any questions? That went a little little faster than I thought. I didn't I I didn't want to give you too much. Well, let's see if I you know what let's let's take these. Let me go ahead and oh. I'll sew these the these two uh, sets together. And then we can sew them into one. I know that one's blue and one's yellow. But I'll sew them together and we can see how that looks as one completed piece. Because once this is completed this way, that should be our 8 inch or 8.5 unfinished. Our 8 inch finished uh, to go along with the, the rest of our pieces. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll stitch along and I'll look and see if you have any questions. And I'll do this quickly. Oh. Of course, they thread unthreaded. Okay, so I'm doing my right side first. So I'm going to chain piece this one to the, to it. Why is it when you rush, something takes you longer? I'm going to take this one and put my right side. Oh, 
Wait a minute. Which way am I? Which way am I going here? I I want to sew them so they're all the same. All going in the same direction. Does anybody have any uh, questions or want to see something? Why is it when you hurry, it actually takes you longer? Okay, so now I'm going to put on my left side. I don't see any question. Anybody still there? Did you leave me? See, I almost put that on upside down. That's why I always lay it down, and flip it. I lay it. Nope. I lay it down how it's supposed to look, and then just turn the page. And you can stick a pin in that if you want. You know, sometimes or a lot of times we do quilts that uh, have a lot of different blocks in them. You can do quilts that have the same blocks in them, just all different fabrics. So when, you, when, you, when you're doing something like that, you make a bunch of blocks and then you, you know, set it aside to do something else, throw them in a little bucket. So now I'm going to sew this together so that you can see the diamond. And in this case, we're not going to have seams going in the opposite direction, so we got to be a little more careful. So I'm going to put a pin in there because I don't want these seams to go in because of up here. And normally I would probably, well, I might before I do this, take it to the take it to the iron and just give it a press and make sure you trim up, make sure it's your four and a half. And remember, I'm not, I don't want to uh, pin in all that seam. See, I'm going to call it seamage because there's two seams there. I don't want to be trying to stick a pin in all that seamage. And I think that I'm I'm trying to decide. No, I'm good. I was trying to decide whether I felt the need to open this seam, press it open, but I go by kind of like the feel of it. So if I open it up, because a quarter inch seam is really, it's hard to, to um, press open. You really have to finger press it before you put the iron there. I don't know, it doesn't feel much different, but I'll go ahead and do it open. And 
let me get my little mat. So you could have diamonds, you know, going across your row. So in the um, in the grand scheme of things in our resource book, because this is now, so this is eight and a half, this is four and a half. So any of the other blocks that we did, this will this will fit right in with. So if you wanted to take the blocks, for example, if you want to take the blocks in your resource book and do a row of each type of block or just, you know, set them willy-nilly, they'll all work together. So you could take, this one is a four and a half. You could have another one that was a four and a half next to it. The two together would make the eight, eight and a half, eight finished. That if you had an eight inch block above it or around it, it would they would all work together. So how's that? That looks pretty cool. And it's so dotty, and once you have it in your quilt, um, you're not going to notice it. But if it was if it was bothering you because this is on a slight slant, just when you when you cut them, you know, cut one, then turn this and cut the next one out of the fabric. But remember, you're going to have a quarter inch off on each on each one so you you're never going to match it up exactly but you can match it up a little straighter than I did there okay so for those of you that um got the whole thing <clears throat> if you want to stop watching now that's fine but I'm just going to review so if any of you are taking notes I probably should have done a um resource uh worksheet on it maybe I'll do that later so if we're making the half rectangle triangle die only pardon my pardon my reach for one minute oh here we go i got more of these let me put together i'll put together a brown and a black so you can see it oh no see see these two won't go together because they were, oh no, here, no, see what'll happen? I'll get a, I'll get a kite. <clears throat> so who goes with who? Here we go. When you want to cut these, your fabrics are either all facing up or all facing down. When you, when you cut them, you can still, so I, I'm, which way am I? Oh, so these were these were right side down because because they're opposite of this. I don't I don't want to get you more confused. Yeah, this will this will at least look like the die is. So everybody's right side up. But you can still cut here on your on your square if you're using a charm pack you can cut here and even if you're using a length of fabric you can cut here and then you can turn it and cut again so you so you're making the most out of your fabric don't flip it you're just turning it so my cut side <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the cut side of my die is facing down when I turn it, the cut side of my die is still facing down. Okay, so when we're doing, when we want these rectangles, all the fabric is facing in the same direction. <clears throat> so I, and I always, I always do right side up. I like to look at the pretty side whenever I can. Okay. So just using the half rectangle triangle to make a rectangle, to make a rectangle, all the fabrics are facing right side up. 
The nice thing with fabric right side up is if you need to move it to, you know, get a little fussy cut of something you want in particular, you have the ability to do that. <clears throat> but you're going to stack these up and you should be able to do like six at a time. So you'll have six this way and then you'll have six that way. So that would give you uh, 12. No, you need that would give you six because you, a half and a half makes the whole. So that would give you a total of um, six finished rectangles. Okay, so right side up. When we're doing this one with the diamond, I'm going to call this the diamond in the, not the diamond, the triangle in a square. Okay, a triangle in a square. We need our triangle. So you can pile those up. But when we cut the sides, because they need to be opposite of each other, we want two fabrics the same, I'm assuming. So I want to make sure if I'm going, if this is directional, I'm directional on both the same. But we want the, the fabrics for the half rectangle triangle, we want them right sides together. But even, even though, so they're right sides together, we can still turn this and flip to get another set out of. So you're making the most out of your fabric, whether it's a charm pack or whether it's a long strip, whatever it is. You just want to make sure that they're right sides together because you need a left and a right. And if you forget, just take your triangle and put your side on it. And then if you, and then if you try to turn this, it won't work. So if you have to flip it over, that means you need to cut down into one fabric and you need to cut up into the other fabric Hence, having your right sides together because you're cutting down into one and essentially up into the other. Does that make sense to everyone? <clears throat> so I'll just wait a minute, see if anybody has any questions. And here's my little pile of okay. Right sides together, all right sides up. So I'll put that like, wait, wait a minute. Let me make it a little neater for those of you that might want to take a picture. But you know what? I should do it this, I should just do it this way. Hold on one second. That way you can see the individual one. So if you need to take a picture, oh, wait a minute. Okay, try that. So right sides together, all right sides up. Okay, does anybody have any questions? And remember, this is out of the Build-A-Block Plus. So it's another one with, and I've, I've taken the drawers out, but it's another one with uh, the, three, the three drawers. And there's five, one, two, three, four sizes in there in your book. So it goes right along with your regular builder block set.
Oh, sorry, hit that tin again. Okay, so I think everybody's all set. I haven't seen any more chat in there. Um, unless I'm missing something. Oh, Cindy says, love that fabric. Is that the dotty one or the uh, the brown, browns with golds and blacks with silver? They were in the same um, charm pack. That's um, Northcott fabrics. Okay, so I hope everybody enjoyed that and you learned a little something about sewing together a couple of these blocks out of the, or units, however you want to look at it, out of this uh, Build the Block Plus set. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I really like this one. Lynn was just saying she likes that directional look. I really got a kick out of this one with the, like the, it's like the opposites. Well, let me get these out of the way. I really like that. And remember, you could make a table runner. So you could make three rows. Uh, you could make two rows placemat. You could put some borders on it. So, yeah, sandstone fabric. That's right, Cindy. Sandstone. Good, good going, Cindy. Okay, so, yeah. I, this is my favorite of the evening putting those together like that. It's like, uh, what is it like, yin and yang? Oh, you're welcome, Rhonda. So thanks, everybody, for joining in. And um, see you next Thursday, 7 p.m. And for those of you that follow along on Saturday, so along, um, I have a morning class. So we'll be meeting at uh, 1.30 instead of 1.00. And I haven't finished the project yet. You know me. I can't I can't decide till I have to decide, apparently. Uh, I'll post that up hopefully sometime tomorrow afternoon for Saturday afternoon's class. It's um it's a I, I think I'm gonna do a scissor holder. I hate to say that I'm gonna do that and then I get halfway through and I decide to do something else. But that's that's my plan is to draw up a, some kind of a scissor holder. So thanks again, everybody. Um, if you're new, would you, you know, hit the subscribe, uh, ring the, what is it? You ring, hit the bell so that you get um, notices when I post or when I come live. And of course, always do the thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, so thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you either next Thursday or this Saturday, next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or on Saturday, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And you can check with Miss Lorene Schoolhouse Facebook to see what the uh, project will be for Saturday and what the fabric recommendations will, uh, you know, cutting and all that stuff. So again, thanks again. Let me see. Oh, geez, that was my elbow.